So, related to the previous video, I got a lot of doubts stating how to determine the direction of the induced current. So, in today's class, our concentration will be on finding the direction of induced current and studying about the Lenz's law and the conservation of energy. Now, one of the questions that we have seen in the previous video was that, okay, so we have seen Faraday's experiment, like the galvanometer connector, and a north pole is brought towards this coil with a speed V and C. So it has got an initial kinetic energy that is equal to half mv square. According to your knowledge, EM of is energy per unit charge. EM of work done per unit charge. That is work done is energy. So EM of has to be nothing but energy of one coulomb charge. Now let us take one of the tens of this coil. And let us consider that the north pole is brought towards this. Now, what Lenz's law says, according to the Lenz's law, the direction of the induced current is to oppose the cause that produces the change in flux. The direction of the induced current is to oppose what? Oppose the cause of the change in flux. Oppose the cause of the change in flux. Here, what causes change in flux? This motion of the magnet. The cause that produces the change in flux is the motion of this magnet. That means it's the initial kinetic energy of this magnet. Which means a current should be induced in such a way so as to reduce the kinetic energy of this magnet. That means the current induced in such a way that the, I mean, the, the light phase or the phase that, uh, phase towards which the north pole is moving should act like a north pole because according to our knowledge, light poles ripple each other. And in the previous chapter, we have seen that every magnetic configuration has a north pole and south pole. So it means a current should be induced in such a way that the near phase should be a north pole and far phase should be a south pole. Now let us see. So this is coming with the velocity v. Now I am considering that the near phase is north pole means the near phase is north pole. Near phase is north pole means what should be the direction of the induced current. What should be the direction of the induced current. So it has to be. Okay, so for that purpose we consider the phase of the circular coil likewise. So here I want north pole, right? Here I want north pole. How to draw north? This is how we draw north. This is how we draw N. Which means this should be anti-clockwise. This should be anti-clockwise. So that means a current should be induced in this coil in the anti-clockwise direction. Current should be induced in this coil in the anti-clockwise while looking from this face. I will show you. Suppose this is the magnet. This is the north pole of the magnet. And this north pole is approaching the circular loop. Approaching the circular loop. So I have to say that the current, okay, this is this coil I am saying. So current should be in such a way that, so this is the direction of the current. So this is anti-clockwise and this phase is always going to be clockwise. So in this coil, the direction of the current is likewise. So this should be the direction of current here. This should be the direction of current here when north pole is coming towards this. Which means this current will flow likewise. So in this case we are expecting the galvanometer to reflect that direction from its normal orientation because current is towards that direction. 
current is towards that direction so when north pole is approaching this one this should uh, uh, the galvanometer should deflect in this direction suppose what happens instead of this north pole i am letting the south pole to come the south pole to approach when south pole is approaching galvanometer will show in this direction so actually this was a question for g main september session uh, september session i think 4th september also in 4th september we had a question based on this concept the deflection of the galvanometer so in this case the deflection will be like this so if uh, when the magnet enters the galvanometer shows the deflection in this direction suppose when the uh, galvanometer now is completely inside this coil the deflection reduces to zero because there is no change in flux now when this magnet leaves the coil sorry not the galvanometer when the magnet is completely inside the coil the deflection is zero similarly when this magnet leaves the coil galvanometer will show a deflection but in the opposite direction that is towards this direction this is how when north pole enters north pole enters means first this direction then zero then opposite direction suppose if it is a south pole what would have been your answer first this direction then zero then in this direction now that is not our consideration okay that is a part of discussion only as i was getting a doubt how to determine the di uh, direction of deflection of the galvanometer that is the reason why i explained same now let's see why north pole here this is north and north so everything everything in the universe should follow what is called conservation of energy so when one decays the other thing is formed in malayalam we say onnu cheeñal mattondinu valamagum just like the way we are to say when the north pole is approaching this coil the near side of the coil should be north pole this is because when north pole and north pole comes in interaction the, this coil will exert a repulsive force on the magnet the coil will exert a repulsive force on the magnet coil will exert a repulse okay there is a power failure at the moment so north pole will exert a repulsive force on this magnet as a result of the repulsive force there is a loss of kinetic energy for the magnet the magnet will lose its kinetic energy when magnet loses the loss in the kinetic energy will appear as the electrostatic potential energy is it clear i repeat when magnet comes towards a coil the near face of the coil acquires a north pole as it is north pole facing this one as a result of the two north poles as like poles repel each other the kinetic energy of the magnet will decrease as a result of the decrease in the kinetic energy of the magnet the decreased kinetic energy will appear as the electrostatic potential energy of the coil electrostatic potential energy of the coil actually this is what is a abstract of what is lenz's law conservation of energy as given in the ncert book this is the abstract i repeat once more when north pole approaches the coil the near face of the coil acquires north pole the purpose of appearing acquiring north pole is to oppose the motion of the magnet as a result of the uh, opposition or provided to the motion of the magnet the kinetic energy of the magnet decreases the decrease in the kinetic energy of the bar magnet will appear as the electrostatic potential energy of the coil this is one way i can explain lenz's law and conservation of energy now we have to see in what all ways emf can be induced in a coil the method of inducing emf in a coil method of inducing emf in a coil e method of emf so we have got the formula for magnetic flux phi is equals b dot a or this is equal to ba cos theta if the coil has n tens one has to say ban cos theta ban cos theta now induced in epsilon is equals minus d phi by dt induced in of epsilon is equal to minus d phi by dt now question in what all ways phi can be varied in what what are the ways by which varying magnetic flux one we can say we can vary magnetic flux by one changing 
the magnetic field B. That is one way of inducing and of changing the magnetic field B. Second one, changing area of the coil. Then third one I can say is changing the orientation of the coil. Changing the orientation. Changing the orientation here means changing the angle. Number of times changing that often we won't do. So these are the ways by which we can call induce an EM. Now let me tell you, this is changing the magnetic field EMF is what is called a changing field EMF. So when you change B, when B is changed, that kind of EMF is called a changing field EMF. I will discuss a few examples of the same when I, I use a panel board. But at present, I won't find the enough time to write everything on the board I'm discussing. So, I will discuss in the panel board uh, some examples corresponding to this. Taking into consideration of a few, few problems from NGRT book as well. So, this is changing field EM of say. The second things we are going to discuss is what is called a motional EM of. So, that is where we are at the moment. Motional EM of. Motional EMF. Okay. Now consider a uniform magnetic field directed into the plane of the border strong. A uniform magnetic field which is directed into the plane of the board. And I am placing a conducting rod here. This is a conducting rod. Conducting rod. The conducting rod is moved with a velocity V here. Conducting rod is moved with a velocity V. Okay. Now the question is, what is the EMF induced in this rod? What is the EMF induced in this rod? Okay. I will just tell you, I will tell you, just to pause a minute, just pause the video for a minute and just think about it. I'm sure your first answer is zero because I said the field is uniform. Magnetic field is uniform. Magnetic field is uniform. There is no area because a road has only linear dimensions. A road does not have an area. Then the question comes, how will you, okay, will there be an EM of induced here? Let us see. When you say conducting rod, conducting rod, you have to understand that it's a conducting rod. A conducting rod consists of an enormous number of loosely bound electrons called free electrons. An enormous number of loosely bound electrons. A conductor contains an enormous number of free electrons called uh, loosely bound electrons called free electrons. Now think like this is a bus. And you are all sitting inside a bus. The bus is moving the velocity V. Which means you are also having that velocity. Right? Because we are all moving along with the bus. We are all moving along with the bus. Is it clear to all of you? We are all moving with the bus just like the way when this conductor is given a velocity all electrons in this conductor are also moving with that velocity all electrons are also moving with that velocity which means the electrons will experience a magnetic force given by minus e into v cross b this is the magnetic force experienced by those electrons now, magnetic field is into the board. So, this is equal to minus EVB sine. How much is the angle between V and B? V is in this direction, B is into the plane. So, what is the angle between V and B? It's 90 degree. EVB sine 90. So, answer is minus EVB. N cap. 
so we need to find out the direction so we when we say magnitude of this force no minus is required no n cap is required the force is evb the magnitude of the force is evb now we will find out the direction of that force now it's an electron magnetic field is directed into the board so you have to treat the current in the direction opposite to the motion of the electron as all electrons are moving towards the right direction we have to see that the current is towards the left direction which means this is the direction of current this is the direction of the velocity i am showing here this is the velocity this is the current this is the magnetic field so all electrons will be pushed downwards all electrons will be pushed downwards as a result of pushing these electrons downwards a positively charged region will be created a negatively charged region will be created here because electrons are pushed down to the maximum extent possible electron all electrons are pushed down uh, to the maximum extent possible that is to the bottommost point this is plus if i say this length is equal to l the work done by this force is equal to okay when electrons are pushed downwards means positive charges are pushed upwards work done by this force in order to move a charge between these two plates is f dot l f dot l f dot l this is equal to or otherwise we say l dot f l dot f so this is equal to f is this much now length is this direction and you know that the force is downwards correct so the force on the electron is downwards so force and length are in the same direction this is the direction of the force this is the direction of the displacement l for the electron electron this is the direction of the displacement l for the electron so i can say that the angle between l and f is zero angle between l and f is zero so work done is equal to l into e into vb cos zero because l and f are in the same direction now this is work done now induced we have as the formula work done per unit charge w by e is w by e in that case you will get this answer as blv this is the formula for induced dmf on a rod when it is moved with a velocity v in a perpendicular magnetic field so please understand that in this case l is perpendicular to v which is perpendicular to b so all these three are mutually perpendicular that is where the formula for induced dmf is equal to blv the induced dmf is equal to blv when l v and b are perpendicular to each other now this emf is on the road is called uh, the motional emf that is you can see here motional emf now here it is created between these two points so this is the answer for the induced emf in uh, this is this expression is valid when l v and b are perpendicular suppose instead if you are giving the velocity likewise suppose if the rod is given a velocity likewise if the rod is given velocity likewise so you have to take which component so suppose that this angle is theta this angle is theta then you have to take that component of velocity always v and b are perpendicular v uh, i mean l is perpendicular to b v is also perpendicular to b but L is not perpendicular to V here. So what we have to see, we have to take that component of velocity which is perpendicular to the length. Now here, this is V cos theta. So in this case, your answer will be what is going to be your answer for induced EMF? It is going to be B L V cos theta. The induced EMF for this situation is equal to B L V cos theta. In this case, when the velocity on the road is make an angle theta with the length of the rod now if i ask you the next question instead of this i mean keeping the rod likewise suppose the rod is kept likewise the length is likewise 
this is the velocity. Question is, what is the induced DMF? In this case, L is parallel to V, right? L and V are parallel because length you have to take in this direction. Parallel or anti-parallel and velocity is also in the same direction, which means the angle between L and V is zero. In this case, induced DMF is equal to zero. No EMF can be induced. Just like the other point, if you just look at this situation, so road has only length, linear dimension. When you say about a road, the area of cross section you have to take as negligible. Width negligible. So length only. When you consider a road, you will take care of only its length. You will take care of only its length. You have to take into consideration of the length into matter. So let me tell you, in this case, the length and the velocity are parallel. The condition for this equation is BLV, BLV is what? L, V and B are perpendicular. Or otherwise, if you say this is cos theta, in this case, the component of V perpendicular to the length is zero. Component of V, I repeat, component of velocity perpendicular to the length is zero. In this case, there is no possibility of an induced EMF. No possibility of an induced EMF, let me tell you. Now, let us take the situation given in the NCRT book. Consider a resistor L. So this is where x is equal to 0. A rod of length L is moved to the velocity V in a uniform magnetic field. Okay, so I'm, I think it's everything is in the magnetic field. I'm extrapolating this magnetic field. Now in this case, this length, the instantaneous length is equal to, this is x is equal to 0. This is x is equal to x. Now the velocity is v. The induced, the flux phi at any instant is equal to bl x. That is b into area. This length is l, this length is x. The instantaneous flux phi is equal to bl x. And the induced DM of epsilon is equal to minus d phi by dt. The magnitude means you have to take only this one. The, okay, otherwise I will take. Okay, magnitude of induced DM phi I am taking. Direction I will specify you. So d phi by dt, that is equal to blv. Okay. blv because bl into b is a constant, l is a constant. Derivative of x with respect to time is velocity, blv. Now the question, this will create a current, the current I is equal to epsilon by R, which is equal to BLV divided by R. BLV divided by R, that is current I is equal to epsilon by R, which is equal to BLV by R, ready? Is it clear? Current I is equal to epsilon by R, that is equal to BLV by R. Now, the direct, what should be the direction of current? What should be the direction of current? This is very, very important. What should be the direction of this induced current? According to Lenz's law, it should oppose the cause. Now, what is the cause of this EMF? As you can see the figure, change in flux. What causes, in what respect the flux is changing? The magnetic field is uniform. Here, flux changes due to a change in area. Here, I repeat, here flux changes due to a change in area because area is L into X. Here X is a variable. So area is a variable. This is a case where EM of it is induced as a result of the change in area. Now the question, what causes the change in area? This velocity. What causes? What causes the change in area? What causes the change in area? The change in velocity. Sorry, uh, what causes the change in area? Velocity causes the change in area. Velocity. It's a velocity that causes the change in area. Velocity causes the change in area. Now, which means, according to Lenz's law, then what should be opposed? According to Lenz's law, what should be opposed? This velocity must be opposed. Velocity must be opposed means a magnetic force should be induced in this direction. 
a magnetic force should be induced in this direction many would say directly sir you could have answered this directly but i want you to get every aspect of this concept clear so a magnetic force should be in this direction which means what should be the direction of the induced current now let's apply lenses now sorry fleming's left hand rule so force is in this direction magnetic field is into the board so which means the direction of the induced current is upwards the direction of the induced current is upwards so let me tell you there is a mistake in ncrt figure with the arrow mark that you can find out from the textbook so this should be the direction of the induced current that means the induced current should act in the upward direction now when the current reaches here how it goes it goes in this direction in this direction in this direction in this direction so it should be the anti clockwise anti clockwise this should be the direction of the induced current now here induced current is a constant because b is a constant l is a constant uh, v is a constant r is constant i'm saying v is a constant right i'm saying v is a constant so this is the magnetic force now my next question here i'm continuing with the next topic that is energy consideration energy consideration what i'm saying that what is a quantitative study i'm i've taken motion aim of now i consider energy consideration a quantitative study ready now question comes so i i said b is a constant l is a constant v is a constant r is a constant that means induced current is a constant now the question generally there arises um, comes here how can this velocity be a constant because when a magnetic force is acting in this direction it's a decelerating force and velocity must decrease the velocity must decrease when a decelerating force is acting on the body so what should i do in order to sustain this velocity an external agency has to apply a force in this direction let me tell you that is f external f external f external is equal to fb right so i'm just wiping off the setting so we got this expression so i is equal to blv by r so external agency x external should be equal to fb because i said the velocity is a constant velocity is a constant means net force is zero net force is zero means these two forces must be equal and opposite and according to our knowledge this is equal to bil bil so f external is equal to b square l square v divided by r how i got this equation you can see current i is equal to blv by r 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 so i when i substitute i already bl is here bl into bl is b square l square v divided by r now what is the power of the external agency power exerted by the external agency this is f external this is the direction of f external this is the direction of velocity f external into v because both are acting in the same direction so angle between them is zero so it is f external into v now f external is b square l square v divided by r so this will be equal to b square l square v square divided by r that is power external but what is b square l square v square this is epsilon square because you have learned that epsilon is equal to blv epsilon is equal to blv so this is epsilon square divided by r what is epsilon square by r so potential difference between these two points is epsilon that is the induced rate of across these two ends this is epsilon considering that all other parts are resistance free epsilon square by r is the power dissipated by the resistor power dissipated by the resistor again we prove the conservation of energy power generated by the external agency is equal to the power dissipated by the resistor power develop or power generated by the external agency is equal to the power dissipated by the resistor that again proves the 
conservation of energy according to the lenz's law conservation of energy according to the lenz's law again proves conservation of energy according to the lenz's law